What's up, YouTube? My name is John Jackson, and today we are talking about how to make this. Bloop, 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 bloop. These little shape explosions in After Effects. There's two ways I like to do it, either the quick and clean way or the more organic and TLC way. So let's go right in After Effects and figure out how to do these little things, all right? All right, in After Effects, to get this started, we will need to make a new composition. Click the New Comp button. Call this Tutorial Explosion number one. Make this 10 seconds, 1080 by 1080. Click OK. Now from here, we're gonna go to View and Show Rulers. We're going to drag out these rulers so we have a point directly in the center of our composition. So mouse over the ruler and then drag that down. Now if you want to make it very accurate, let's uncheck lock guides or control alt shift semicolon and then we'll right click on that ruler and we know that 1080 is the width and length of our console. We'll divide that by 2 which is 540 and then 540 and now we have a point directly in the center and lines going up and down. Go to view and lock those guides. Then we'll go to layer, new shape layer. Hit G on your keyboard to open up your pen tool right here. We'll go directly in the center, zoom in and click. Got one point for that path and we'll scroll up. Doesn't matter how far it goes, I make it maybe go halfway up the composition. Make sure that you have view snap to guides right here. So now if we move that point around, it's going to snap directly in place. So we have a straight line going up that comp. Let's bring down that stroke to like a three. Doesn't really matter. We'll collapse the properties of our shape layer, go into that shape. Let's turn off that fill, we won't need that go into trim path. So we'll go to add trim paths and then we'll make a keyframe at the very beginning for the end. Set that to zero. Let's go forward, let's say 12 frames. So just click right there or hit page down on your keyboard 12 times. 100. We'll go into that. We'll hit F9 on those keys. Go to our graph editor and we'll just play with that curve for a half second. Make it feel a little bit nicer and now we'll have this animation where if we turn off these guides show guides and just hide our transform properties we'll see this line sweet we'll click on that end property control c click on the start control v and we'll copy and paste those keyframes and nothing's there. Uh-oh, what does that mean? Well, if we shift the start keyframes forward in time, let's say two frames, one, two, and we play that through, now we got this little shape. Let's just let me shift that two more frames down so we got that sort of look. Now, how are we gonna make this explode? Well, we're going to uncollapse all the shape properties, click on contents, add repeater. And what the repeater does is basically takes a shape in After Effects and repeats it for X many times. So you could have like a square and it can go left, right, up, down, and it's all based off just one shape. So how does that work for our little explosion? Well, we'll collapse the repeater properties, go to transform repeater. If we play it through with the repeater, we're getting that same line three times. That's because the default repeater properties, it just adds a hundred to the position, but we'll zero that out. So. Now all the shape layers are on top of each other. We'll go to that rotation, and right now we have three copies of that shape. So if we say the rotation is say 20 degrees, it'll offset each shape by another 20 degrees or 30 degrees or whatever you set that to. So how are we gonna make a circle? Well, you could just take 360 because a circle is 360 degrees and then divide that by the number of copies. So 360 divided by three and hey, now it's all evenly spaced. Now what if you wanted 12 copies? You could just do 12 copies and then rotation 360 divided by 12. 
Sweet, now we got 12 copies, but there's a better way to do that. Expressions, my favorite part. So all you gotta do is go to your rotation and we'll just alt click on that stopwatch. We'll type 360 divided by and then pick with that to the number of copies. And if we change that property of the copies, we'll get a perfect circle. That's the tutorial. Basically, it's a little shape. Everything's mathematically built based on the grids and the rulers that we did so that it all works in a way so that if we change any of the properties of the path, let's say we go into those keyframes and move that, it'll update everything pretty naturally. And if we go into that path itself, let's just turn off that zigzag really quick, hit Control H to show our transform properties of that layer. Let's just select that point and just drag it up. And now it changes the look. And then what we can do is we can take this layer, let's end it where the explosion ends, and we'll just Control Shift C to pre-compose. I want to call this explosion number one. And then we can just duplicate that and let's say change the scale down just a little bit, so like 75% and then rotate it by like, let's say 15 degrees, let's say 30 degrees, like somewhere halfway in between, let's say 20 degrees. All right, so that's halfway in between and then just offset that by two frames. And then we got a, something a little bit more natural. Now, my issue with this is that it still feels very robotic. And what a good design in After Effects looks like is something with organic imperfections. And what I mean by that is some things have repetition, but that repetition is not always the same every single time. And the problem with this look is that it has a very static look. So if we just open up all these properties, turn on that zigzag, let's go back into our original one. And yeah, it still looks really cool, but I think we can take this to another level. So how are we gonna do that? Let's make a new composition. So new comp, we'll call this explosion number two. And then same properties, click okay. Now from here, we'll add a shape layer. And to do that, we'll go new, And from here, we're gonna go into the content, add a rectangle, open up that rectangle path. Let's just set that to 25, something small, something subtle. Subtlety is key. So from here, we'll change the position and the scale. We'll hit Control G on that rectangle path to group it and get transform properties on it. Call this square. And we'll put a keyframe on the position and the scale on frame zero. On frame zero, we'll set the scale to zero, move forward four frames, one, two, three, four, set the scale to 100. And then over 12 frames, we want the position to say X or Y, doesn't matter, but make sure it goes in a straight line. So let's say negative 420. And then at the very end, we're gonna hit that opacity keyframes. We'll go forward one frame, set that to like 75%. Or let's say zero first, then one more frame forward, and then we'll say 75%, then one more frame forward, and then set that back to zero, and then 50, and then zero. Basically, you're trying to create a flicker effect. And if you haven't seen my little flicker tutorial, highly recommend checking that out. Link will be in the description. Uh, where were we? Uh, 25, and then zero. And then if we just scooch that position to keep down. We got this little animation. Oh, that reminds me. We don't have any color on this. We gotta add a stroke. Let's add a stroke, set that to two, and now we'll have a little square. All right, so we could use the repeater option, but the problem with the repeater option is it does things very statically. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-compose this shape layer. Down, control shift C, and we'll do uh, shape explosion uh, underscore PC square. And then what we can do is we can now duplicate that comp. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's say if we want it to be in a circle, 
but we don't want it to be a perfect circle because it, we want to add some organicness to it. So let's just bring up this first layer to like 20 or 40. Just like kind of spread out these numbers a little bit so you get kind of a circle. And then we're gonna offset all these little layers doo -doo, by just a little bit. That looks pretty cool. So what we did is the same concept, but we're just using the same thing over and over again just by rotating. And if we change the scale of some of these by just a little bit, you get a completely different look. And I'm just like randomly adding these different shape layer. Now if we go into that source and we just reveal those properties by hitting U and let's just bring all these closer together. So it happens a little bit faster. Sweet. Now what we can do is let's say we want to make this a step further, add some circles or some triangles. We can duplicate that and we can go into those properties, hit Control K, we'll change this to PC circle. And then instead of a rectangle path, we'll just add an ellipse path. And then get rid of that rectangle path and just set that ellipse path to say, let's say it's be slightly different. look and maybe we'll change the speed of this guy by a little bit and then we will go into that explosion number two duplicate the first square just a couple times and just set that slightly different off setting these layers different organic looks and we'll just take that circle comp and alt click and alt click drag and when you click on a layer in your composition and then a layer in your source or your project bin and hold alt it'll replace it exactly where it is so just do that a couple more times and then if we play that back oh let's uh make sure we go to these properties and change all this stuff And how's this look? Different shape layers get different looks. And then we can take this a step further. We can trim this composition. So trim comp to work area. And then we'll control A and then control shift C. So we just selected everything. We'll call this a shape explosion number two. PC number two. It doesn't really matter the name. Now we have this comp, and then we can just duplicate that and just change the scale and maybe rotate it a little bit and offset it again. Same concept, right now we're getting an even cooler look, something more organic and fun with just some shape layers moving up and down. No plugins required. I use this technique all the time because it Hey, one, it's free, and two, it adds a different layer of just complexity to your animation. So I hope this tutorial was useful. If you learned something, let me know in the comments down below. Think about things in After Effects, like make it once and then just duplicate it a bunch of times because, hey, if you just change position, scale, rotation, you can get some really cool looks. Anyways, that's it. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comments down below, or if you have questions, let me know in the comments down below. Go ahead and smash, punch, kick. Do what you gotta do to that like button. I appreciate it. It helps me get the word out. And hit that subscribe button. It really helps me know that you enjoy this content and you wanna see more of it. So yeah, that's it. My name is John Jackson and I will see you beautiful people in that next video. My lens cap is awkwardly far away. Ah! Bye! Put the place up.